Hello and welcome to Couch Time with Sonia. I'm Sonia Lowe, the Embrace Coach, and that's Sonia with a J. I'm so glad that you're joining us for this episode. Have you ever felt, do I have what it really takes to succeed? Do I have the keys to unlock my destiny? I know you have those questions because sometimes I had those questions, but I'm going to tell you, there's so much that you don't even realize that you already have within you. And my next one, uh, is, do you think that going after your dreams, is it too late for you? My guest today is going to share with us on how she went from being stagnant to producing much fruit. And it's all about faith, wisdom, and work. Grab you a cup of coffee, grab some tea, and we'll be right back. authentic, real, and exposed. Becoming bare is a continual and intentional process that requires courage and perseverance. Life has a way of tainting the realities of who we really are. From the moment we are born, others place their expectations upon us and we strive to become someone we were never created to be. To experience a fulfilling life of purpose, we must discover our bare self. Becoming bear begins with a decision. Will you choose to live in the familiarity of chaos? Or will you elect to live in the freedom of becoming your bare self? Experience freedom and healing. Embrace becoming bear. One Embrace Ministries presents Beautifully Bare in Cabo. Our theme this year is Refocus. Sisters, come steal away with us and grab some time to refresh, fellowship, love, be encouraged, and inspired. Bear is a freedom movement of sisterhood, and our mission is to gather, worship, and be transformed by God. It is life changing, it's personal and it's intimate. We have some amazing speakers who are going to pour into you. So grab your passports and come celebrate getting away with us. It is time. Come expecting because you are going to nurture the uniqueness within you. Come take off your mask and become bare. Be authentic, real, and exposed. Remember, spaces are limited. So register now at the link below. Welcome back. I am so excited to be sitting here on the couch today with the beautiful Miss Nigeria Brooks. Man, she has a list that is considered her titles, but most of all, she is just so humble and she loves God and that is what I love the most. But she is a minister, she is an author, she is an entrepreneur. I call her the brand architect. That's what it is. <laughs> She just has so many titles, but most of all, today, you're going to get the opportunity to hear from her, her story, and actually how she's going to share with you how you go from a moment of being stagnant to a moment of producing much fruit. So welcome to the couch, Miss Nigeria. Thank you so much for having me, Sonia. It is indeed an honor, my sister. It really is. Thank you. Thank you. So excited. So, of course, you know here, we talk about everybody has a story. Mm -hmm. Everybody. Mm -hmm. And everybody's story matters. But it doesn't matter if you don't share it. Right. right. Right? So let's tell our viewers a little bit about your story, whatever you'd like to share. 
Okay. Well, um, I started out, you know, as a, as a young girl in the house with both parents. Okay, so I was born into a Muslim household. My dad is Muslim, and so it was a strict household when my dad was there. Um, you know, I was taught to be very modest, and I was taught um, to, you know, to be a young lady. And for those lessons, I was very grateful, but then I started to see behavior changes with my dad and mom that started having me question everything. So I started to have doubts really early about faith and even relationships, marriage, everything, as a young girl because you're impressed upon what you see. So, you know, my mom and dad split when I was young, and then my mom went into just um, a mode of just hustling, just working several jobs to keep us afloat. And I became mom to my two younger siblings. My, my mom had all of us by the time she was 21. Mm, so, yeah, okay. all of us by the time she was 21. And so she was young, trying to figure it out. And I realized when she went into that mode of just working a lot, that my mom was like breaking down right in front of me. And I realized that, you know, as a young girl, I did not know my mom's story, but I realized that something was not right because I knew she loved us, but her own issues started to challenge everything. And it started to cause her to be very distant. And mm -hmm. even when she was not working, she would find reasons to be away. And she went through a season of an all transparency, um, you know, struggling with drugs mm -hmm. and um, staying away. And she would not let us know what was happening with her. So I am like nine to 11 and I'm in mom mode. And you're trying to figure out why she's doing what she's doing. Because I know she loved us. Yes. There was no question in my mind and my mom loved us, but I, I went into mom mode. So I became mom very early and I became, I was very, and still I am very protective of, of my mom. So I was not telling my aunts and my grandmother what was going on because, you know, you were taught what's mm -hmm. happening in the house. Mm -hmm. Stays in the, in the house. house. Yes. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to honor my mom, but I'm struggling because I'm nine and I'm taking right. care of a seven and a five year old, making sure I'm doing hair, we're going to school, not missing a beat. Wow. Um, and then things started to get extreme and my grandmother became you know, she got on to what was happening and then she threatened my mom if she didn't get things together, she would take us or have us go through the system, which I know my grandmother, you know, God mm -hmm. rest his soul, would not have done, but she was trying to shake my mom. Exactly. So my mom got it together. She never went to rehab. She got it together, went back into work mode, but she still was struggling. And then I, as a young adult now in my early teens, I'm struggling because I'm like, okay, this doesn't look like it's getting any better. She's working all of these jobs and we are like poor, poor. I knew we were poor. <laughs> so funny. She's like, like, no, we were some poor. Some people poor. say I didn't know we were poor. Like, I was sure <laughs> that we were broke. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, this is not going to, I can't do this. I'm right. like, because she's working so much. So I have to start thinking about how I can make a change. So I started doing wrong things. I started hanging out with the wrong crowd, but you know I understood how to make money, mm -hmm. and I've always been that type of spirit. And you know, so you got to make, sure, you you make sure you're on the right side. Like, you got to make sure because this is you know your superpowers work for evil. You're so clearly, right. I was honing in on them quite early, but then I realized, okay, that is not me. Right in my heart. Right. It is quick money, but I was just fearful of mm -hmm. the harm I was doing to other people. Right. And so I right. realized that I had to make a shift. And so I started to just, you know, I didn't, school bored me. Um, so I knew as soon as I got out of school that I was not going to go straight into college. Right. I knew that. And it I was. I wish more people would realize that it's college is not for everyone. Mm -hmm. I mean, I eventually went, but mm -hmm. I went as a, you know, in my 20s. So I did not right. go right out of school. So I started to figure it out early um, what I wanted to do in entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. was certainly like in, in for me I was an entrepreneur when I was younger it just wasn't for the right things <laughs> that's <laughs> okay you found, your, right way. Business, you found right. your way so, so through <laughs> some of those associates I um, gained my first legitimate business which was a bar and that was very early on mm -hmm. and I, I made a lot of money um, legally which I was very proud of <laughs> yes, exactly. um, but I it, that wasn't for me that environment mm -hmm. was not for me even though my skills to help people really were in operation in a bar setting because people came to talk. Yes. People came to vent. 
people came to confide. Yes. You know, even men. I was young, but men would confide and just talk about what they were going through at home. Women would confide because that's what bartenders do, I learned. Right. And right. so I, I own the bar, but I stayed behind the bar because I love people. So I realized a lot of things about me along with entrepreneurship. And I said, okay. So, mm. I, I, you know, I started feeling for women at a very young age. I, you know, I have to always bring up my mom and my sisters because that was my training ground for mm. broken women. Mm -hmm. Come on. My mom was broken. And when I realized what my mom was going through as a young adult, you know, my mom has always been so humble. She still is. You, you've met my mother. Yes, so I you have. Know. And she's so She adorable. is a love, right? Yes, she is. But she really is humble. And when I, I confronted her as a young adult, I said, why did you leave us like that? You know, I said, you know, she she told me. She said, well, you know, I met your dad, you know, and I went into an abusive situation coming from abuse. And I'm like, what are you talking about? And I found out that my mom was molested by my grandmother's husband for years. Stories. Mm -hmm. Did you hear that? It wasn't until later mm -hmm. she found out the root of the real story. Mm -hmm. The power of sharing the story. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and so I realized that, okay, wow, I didn't know that. So it it taught me, and it really just highlighted for me, when my mom was being really protective of us when we were at my grandmother's, yes. I, I was brought up to be modest. My dad had us in the Muslim culture wearing longs. I mean, as a young girl, I'm still very modest. I, mm -hmm. I don't wear, like, a lot of things. I'm just, right. it's stuck with me. Right. But it was so much so then that my mom, she was just, it was odd behavior. You know, when you're a kid you're walking around in a t-shirt and, you know, your underwear, you know, around your grandparents. <laughs> right. Like, we had to be fully dressed walking through the house. And I'm right. like, what is this? And then I realized that she was protecting us from a predator. Yes. She was doing, remembering what happened to her <sighs> and, it, and going, no, yeah. this will not happen and to And then mine. she told wow. my grandmother, and my grandmother told her she was lying. And that man, my grandmother eventually left, and my mother who would, suffered at the hands of that abuse, took my grandmother from that awful environment and moved my grandmother to Virginia 20 years ago. My grandmother's not since deceased in 2015, but she, for her last day, she was able to live a decent, good life away from abuse. And so my mom, who suffered at the hand of abuse, mm -hmm. and even though she could have been angry at my, my grandmother, right. we my, my mom said to me, you know, I have to forgive her because I don't, I know what I put you through. I don't know what she endured. Come on. That's so, power right there. Yes. Because she realized mm -hmm. the power of forgiveness. Yes. Guys, I'm hoping that you're hearing. Her story is vast. Mm -hmm. But what I heard more than ever is that the power of a story truly matters. She also found out the seeds of some of the things mm -hmm. that she was walking through in life. But also her skills through everything she's walked through, her skills were shining and shining bright to actually bring her to where she is today. And so there's so much more that we're gonna to talk to Nigeria about because there's a whole other side of Miss Nigeria that you have to hear about. So grab your coffee, grab your tea, and we'll be right back. Here at TND Tax Service LLC, we offer a full service of business from tax preparation, tax planning, business bookkeeping, business coaching, company setup, payroll, and money management, along with credit restoration. We are highly trained with proven ability to communicate well with diverse groups, individuals, corporations, and small businesses. We will get the job done. Contact us today at 281-856-6568, or we can also be reached at any social media. If you're starting a business, we can help you get the job done. At TND Tax Service, our motto is, when you start off right, you end up right. Welcome back. Man, you heard Nigia's story, right? But there was something I heard in her story. Not sure if you heard it as well, but she talked about she grew up in a Muslim home. So I want to know a little bit about your faith journey because it's different now. It, it is different. Um, I loved growing up in the, the household that I was in because what my father instilled and what he taught were things that have added value to me as a woman. And as independent as I've become, he made it clear when I was young that there were just some places that um, for women we should always maintain. And for that, I'm forever grateful. Mm -hmm. um, 
but I was a very strong-willed child, as I'm a strong-willed woman. Oh, that doesn't surprise me. <laughs> and so, you know, when we, um, my dad and mom split, we went through so, moving around, we moved so much. But we moved back to my grandmother's house for a while, and one of my aunts, who's my favorite aunt till this day, she was uh, going to church. And so I, my dad was not there. My mom was hardly ever there. So I decided that I wanted to start going to church. And so I went to church and, you know, I started going in at a summer of revival. I converted without permission <laughs> to my family. And my, so my, my. I, I came home and I told everyone that I was a Christian and my mom <laughs> Just looking at me, my mom was like, "You're what?" <laughs> my mom said, "What? Is, what? Well, how you? You just, you're ten, right? You know, well nine. I was about to turn ten. The summer that wow. I was turning ten, and I said, but I felt it. It was something that that you know, for me, I think it's right.' And she's like, "You have no clue what's right for you, but okay." My mom at that point was not practicing any faith because she was broken wow. because of my dad, mm -hmm. and so she was just in limbo. So we weren't going anywhere, but because I grew up in that in a culture where faith, I see it, saw a prayer and faith, and I went to a Muslim mm -hmm. school. I mean, I'm like, okay, so something is missing. That is a part of us. So I found that in church, and then I, I found my leadership skills in church. The pastor and his wife, uh, they took me in. And the person who produces Deep Zone Magazine today is the daughter-in-law of my pastor. Wow. In, in uh, the tri-state area. So I am still wow. connected with that family um, 40 years later. Um, and they have they have really helped me. They never judged me. They answered all of the questions that, uh, that I needed to have. They gave me room to be free. Yes. And they allowed, they knew that I did not grow up understanding a lot so they were very patient with me he was a very learned man is a very learned man and he um would you know instruct me so i became very curious early that on that is awesome someone just taking you under the oh, wing to say did. no no worries mm -hmm. let me teach you mm -hmm. and that's what we have to do today in the body of christ mm -hmm. we really do mm -hmm. is make sure don't shun them mm -hmm. teach them and what i loved about my first pastor is that he was not afraid of my questions and I still have questions. Mm -hmm. I mean, yes. I still have questions. Yes. And there are still things that I want to explore. So he was very kind in asking and in, in giving me the answers that I need, but he also made me feel okay with being free. Mm -hmm. um, another part of my faith journey is that I actually practiced Buddhism for a while because my mom, after her hiatus from any faith, she did not convert to Christianity. She, she became a Buddhist. Mm -hmm. And so I became a Buddhist because I was curious. And right. I'm like, I want to know right. about this. So I started to study and I started to go. And I, and I realized early on that that for me, it was too much of a disconnect for me. Right. You know, I embraced so many cultures yes, and religions because exactly I've been exposed right. to them. Right. But for me, that was not it. And I saw in my mom that she was just escaping. She was just looking for an escape. And she was upset at God. And because in that faith, you're not really, it's the universe. Yes. Right? So yes. you're not even referencing God. Exactly. For her, it was good because she could miss, she could place that anger mm -hmm. somewhere else. Right. Right? What's so awesome is that you're sharing that there's many who are watching who have maybe done the same. Mm -hmm. And they've done different things, explored different things, and mm -hmm. they're feeling bad about it. Mm -hmm. But you don't have to feel bad about it. How do you know sometimes if, unless you actually, you're curious. Mm -hmm. You tried it. Yeah. And no yeah. problem. Right. You know? and, and God, you know, I realized that, you know, I embrace the Muslim community to this day. Yes. And, and appreciate it yes. and respect it as I do my dad, although we don't see eye to eye on several things. Right. Just in general, we're two different people, but I really appreciate the fact that when you're focusing on God, That's good. when you're focusing on God and you realize that, you know what, I've taken so many different routes, who's to say that that so was not the most appropriate good. route to get to where I am and who's to say where I'm going? That is so good right there. No one knows no that. No one knows that. Yes. And none of us know that. That's exactly right. While we're right. here. So for me to ask questions is why. So I realized that, you know, from my faith background, it was, you know, about works and my deeds in the Muslim community. I still hold that near and dear to my heart. Yes. I believe that there's a part. 
I, I felt when I transitioned to Christianity, there was some lethargic mm -hmm. things that were happening. I'm like, right. okay, so we're just waiting on God to do everything. Come on. Can you say that again? I'm like, so we're just waiting on God. We're just going to pray I and just sit here. that and everybody just, hears that. And wait for God to do everything. I'm like, yes. that's not right. No, it's and I'm not like, right. Because, and of course, I'm going back to what I learned. As a, but it's not a child. right. I'm like, mm -mm. And with this grace, concept of grace, mm -hmm. because I come from a Muslim background, I'm like, okay, that is not your get out of jail free card. That's exactly right. You can't just keep doing and keep doing and keep doing it. Well, I, I'm living under grace. That's that not, is not true. It's not proper theology. That's exactly right. And so I came in with that question. So my ministry has been shaped with that mindset mm -hmm. that I'm like, no, there is work required people. Yes. And those of us who work achieve more than those of us who don't. And that is just practical. But yes. for some of us, there are people who I respect greatly. In, in who are of Christian faith, who I am absolute dis I disagree with their way of life right. because we you do you know we just click our heels like it's magic hocus pocus and we rub. But you that's know. the wrong. People have literally followed that theology for years, yeah. and it's the wrong theology. It is. And because of the wrong theology, we're leading people yes. in such the wrong way. We are. And people are lost. They are. Why is it that you see people that are in the body? They're supposed to be in Christ. But they're lost as lost can be. Mm -hmm. Why is that? So thank you for sharing just the journey, mm -hmm. Nigeria, and that no one can say what's the right journey mm -hmm. for you. Right. Absolutely it's so right. awesome. Well, mm -hmm. because of that journey into faith and God being the center of your life, mm -hmm. there's another side that we want to talk about that yes. is wisdom and work. Right? I love it. Yes. <laughs> wisdom and work. And I love the way she said you have to have wisdom. Right? Yes. You have to have wisdom. Yes. But with God, wisdom comes. Yes. And then, of course, now you have wisdom, and then there's work. So I call it the bridge. Yes. Faith, there's a bridge, wisdom, mm -hmm. and there's work, yes. which I love that you talk about there's work we have to do. Girl, there is so much work you're doing, <laughs> and it is amazing, and it's touching lives. I want you to share. There is that I know of, and if I'm missing something, you make sure you tell me. So I know there's Brooks Media, mm -hmm. which you have a full media company. Mm -hmm. And with your media company, what all do you do? Well, the magazines uh, mm -hmm. is how the media company was founded. Okay, okay. and I have to share the magazine. So yes. I have one here on set. <laughs> yes, we do. The Diva Zone is one of the magazines, right? Yes. So share a little bit about Brooks Media and how the magazines got started. Okay, so Brooks Media became the parent company later. Um, I being um well okay i have to talk about i was married to a pastor mm -hmm. a, a, and uh so we had uh, a ministry where women were coming from our former church still friends to me and still friends with me they wanted to talk about their issues but they didn't feel safe in in church and they knew that they mm. had confided in secrets come on before so yes. i said okay well you know what that's why i'm, lo I'm loving being on your couch today Thank because you. it started with five ladies in my living room and they started mm -hmm. to confide and share but I realized that they had gifts that weren't being cultivated. They felt like there was no place for them in wow. ministries. They felt like they were lost in faith. They weren't getting what they needed. They felt so that as much time as they spent in church, they felt so disconnected from God. And I could not understand that because I was on a different path. But I'm like, okay, if you're not operating in your gifts, how are you truly worshiping? That's exactly right. How, That's are, you, exactly how, how right. are you honoring God in faith if you're not even stepping out? on what you know you're called to do. So you feel the stir but you don't move. Right. Mm -hmm. So so they, you know, we're having these conversations and they're sharing and we're confiding in secrets. It's like, you know, we're going to to our graves with the secrets that we share. But then they started having other women that started to come. And Sonia, I mean, it was supposed to be a one or maybe two month thing. I did it. Mm. And they said, "No, we are coming every month." And I'm like, mm -hmm. "Okay, but then it got so bad my cul-de-sac looked like a that I was blocking mail, my neighbors who loved wow. me. I still had that home. They were saying, Nigeria, we love you, but you're blocking our mail on Saturday, so you need to move your Purpose. meetings. Purpose. Yeah. Purpose mm -hmm. was birth, right? It was. Guys, do you hear that? Purpose was birth because she just said yes. Mm -hmm. She said yes, mm -hmm. and she stepped. And of course, there is so much more I have to continue <laughs> with this conversation with her. And so because of that, we're going to take a quick break. But I'm going to tell you now. There is a part two that's coming, so you have to be watching in the part two as well, but we'll be right back. If you would like to be a guest or advertise your business on Couch Time with Sonia, I would love to hear from you. Email me, visit couchtimewithsonia.com. Let's be honest. 
Making a lukewarm marketing video is fairly simple. But who wants lukewarm marketing? Instead, how about something that conveys your unique message? Well, that takes creativity, and creative is what we are. We design custom logos. We even offer professional print services. Our goal is to showcase how good your idea is, no matter what your product is. Whether it's social media marketing for a new author, or the artwork for the book itself, we can help. You've created a new app and need a TV commercial to show it to the world. We can help. Now there's Stork Advisor. If you're a photographer trying to show off your work in a unique way, we can help. Need a promo for your TV show? We can help with that too. It's catch time with Sonia. We're an artistic bunch and we love the creative process. We're not trying to be the best in Houston. We're trying to be the best for you. you just love my guest? Miss Nigea Brooks is an amazing woman doing amazing things, but it was so beautiful that she shared her story. She became Bear right here with us on the show, and I just love that. That's the beauty of being on the couch. You get to share your story, but there was so much more that we wanted to talk about, and so there will be a part two, so you've got to tune in next week so that you can join in on part two of the conversation. But if you are enjoying everything that's going on around here at Couch Time with Sonia, we need and would like your support. We are One Embrace Ministries, and we, of course, work by you sharing your love with us in financial donations. We are looking for sponsors for the show. If you'd like to sponsor the show and get your name out and actually advertise with us, we're looking for you. We're also looking for people who'd love to share their story. We'd like for you to go to the one, the number one, embrace.org and let us know you'd like to be a part of Couch Time with Sonia. Or you can go to couchtimewithsonia.com. Remember that Sonia with a J. But we need your support and are looking for it. So if you'd like to donate, you'd like to give to continue to see Couch Time with Sonia right here on the network, what we want you to do is reach out to us. Let us know how you'd love to support. Also, if you'd like to see Couch Time with Sonia, come to your city and educate and love and empower those around. We'd love to be there as well. So we can't wait till next week so you can see part two. So continue watching, enjoying. Don't forget, subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you can keep up with any episode that you might have missed. God bless you. And remember, you have greatness within you. Embrace it and let the world see it. God bless. See you next week.